So I uh, just released a video going over uh, big changes that happened to New World from the preview event last August all the way up until last week. And I thought at that point, this would be the last New World I do for a little bit until something else big happens. Well, this week, something pretty big happened. With the monthly update, we've gotten some rather significant changes revealed for the game. So there's another brand new weapon. So that's three new weapons they've added since the preview event. This one's called the Rapier. They also overhauled a lot of the crafting system to just make it much more useful throughout the entirety of the game, including end game. They've improved the game's AI, making it more interesting and difficult to fight. They made a huge change for players that goes alongside the skill cooldowns update. In doing so, they've reduced the number of weapons we can carry from three down to two. Now, at first, this might sound terrible, you know, less player choice and all, but I want to talk about uh, why this might actually be a great thing for the game given the recent cooldown weapon swapping changes that happened. Also, they've updated all of the towns in the game so that they each have their own unique look and layout. They've made improvements to the questing system, making it less repetitive. They've made it so that group play is now smoother and just makes more sense to do. And there was quite a bit more. There is a lot going on here. Like, it's again, it's like a significant amount of change. I really cannot believe... I don't know how New World is gonna turn out, but man, they are like rapid fire uh, responding to the feedback and criticisms that the game has had and making adjustments. Whether for better or worse, we'll find out with the end product, but holy crap, New World is continuing to change and evolve quite significantly. So I'm gonna go over um, everything that we now know from this update here in this video. But first, of course, we got a word from today's sponsor. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Tree of Life Audria. This is an upcoming survival MMO where you choose to work with or against other players shipwrecked on a strange island. You'll gather resources to create tools, build structures to protect yourself from the harsh elements, and weapons to fend off the island's dangerous inhabitants. The game features, of course, gathering and crafting. There's the ability to make your own village anywhere. There's base defense mechanics, open world PvP, a player-based economy, and a little bit of treasure hunting. The game is planned for release in quarter one 2021 and if you like what you see go ahead and check out tree of life audria using the link in the description below and why not add the game to your steam wish list while you're at it okay so let's get right into it now the header of this uh update was called honing the craft they say that this whole update here focuses on the changes that they've made to crafting aimed at giving it a more immersive depth and meaningful impact on your gameplay although the crafting changes are big i think a lot of the other changes for me are bigger but let's go from um, beginning to end here so starting off they highlight the brand new weapon the rapier this is a new melee weapon that excels at quick piercing attacks scales off dexterity and has the following two skill trees there's the blood weapon mastery tree that focuses on applying stacks of the bleed status effect and then popping those stacks with big finishing moves like flourish and finish there's also the grace weapon mastery tree that focuses on evasion, counterattacking, and talented blade work with the rapier. And like every other weapon type in the game, the rapier will have its very own legendary, this one called Frozen Lament. So a brand new weapon that scales off dexterity. The last weapon that we got that I tried was the spear, and then they added the, uh, the great axe uh, recently, and now we've got the rapier. So that's three brand new weapons since the preview event. I hope they keep on going, but I will say, a lot of melee weapons, which is fine, but I'd like to see some more range uh, options as well, whether that's caster or physical range. Now let's jump into the crafting system changes. So for those of you crafting fans out here, this will be pretty big. So they made uh, changes to increase the number of items players can craft and added additional functionality to the crafting system. And they say the main goal of this is to keep crafting and gathering relevant through the end game while also adding depth, a new interface, and some interesting choices for players. So the crafting mechanics changes. They've added named items that can be crafted for most trade skills. These items will start at tier 2 and go up to tier 5, and the goal is that they're going to make crafting again relevant to the end game by getting these higher tiers. They've introduced a variety of rare resources and ingredients that's going to be used for crafting these items. Some of these ingredients are also part of the procedural crafting system that will allow you to add gear score bonuses to the items you craft. They've introduced categorical ingredients that allow players to use different 
types of ingredients but that, that are in the same category to, to make crafting easier like you don't have to just farm iron ore necessarily maybe iron and copper are in the same category i don't know if that's accurate but i'm just throwing out like there's categories they say that players can now invest different levels of azoth while crafting the more azoth you invest the more bonuses you have a chance to add to your resulting craft and procedural crafting can now also result in named items if the result is statistically identical to a named item in the game. So basically, instead of crafting like a basic greatsword, if you have the right ingredients, you can craft this specific, unique named greatsword. So again, they're opening up the option for if you want to go out and acquire those items by grinding or fighting mobs or just by getting the proper ingredients to make that specific stat identical item and actually just craft it yourself. They say they've introduced 100 new named weapons and 50 new named armor pieces. These items will have unique names, stats, and backstories. They've also done some updates to the repair mechanics. There's been some food mechanic changes. Okay, so that is uh, some of the big uh, crafting gear related uh, updates and changes. So some pretty big stuff, but I think the next section is really contains what I'm most interested in. So let's start off here with some of the combat updates. They've touched again on the elite enemy system. All named enemies above level 15 are now going to utilize this elite enemy system. Each elite enemy has one to three affixes applied to it that will change their attacks and characteristics depending on the difficulty and level. So these can buff, yes, their damage and health, their defensive and offensive capabilities, but also adding unique things like I think they mentioned before enemies might explode upon death or maybe they have this like aoe freezing aura things like that just to distinguish these named elite creatures from uh more basic creatures other than being just uh <laughs> just uh, again having a higher health pool or dealing more damage making them more interesting they've added also along with this dynamic mesh scaling basically things are going to get bigger <laughs> they say we've scaled up the visual model of various enemy families and enemy enemies within those families to offer more visual diversity to enemies. Larger enemies also have larger hitboxes. So basically, there's going to be bigger enemies in the game. Bigger enemies, smaller enemies. And of course, we assume this will go uh, hand in hand with the elite system. Elite enemies, probably bigger than other <laughs> enemies. I don't know. Um, some AI combat updates. So this is pretty cool stuff here. For one, they're differentiating enemy light attacks and heavy attacks. Heavy attacks now have grit, longer tells, and cause staggers as well as deal significant damage damage while their light attacks will be low in damage have quicker cast and won't cast stagger they've also adjusted how enemies select their attacks adding cooldowns to the heavy attacks to mimic the cooldown timers that are on player abilities so basically there's just going to be a bit more nuance to fighting enemies they're not just gonna be spamming light attacks at you they'll be alternating between light and heavy there'll be things on cooldowns and they'll be adjusting based on how you're playing and to try to make again just make the enemy fighting enemy ai was pretty brain dead in the preview event. So any improvements they make here, I think are good. They say as well that they've increased the difficulty of AI when players fight enemies above their level. Um, there's a list of things here, but essentially if things are close to your level, they'll be a little bit harder. If they're way above your level, they're just gonna completely whoop your ass, basically, essentially with these changes. So that's, I think that's a good thing. Here is the biggest thing, the combat system update. First and foremost here, right off the top, they say they reduced the number of weapons a player can equip from three to two. I actually think that this could be a really good thing if, if one of two things happens, if they add some more interesting mechanics to the base combat, the non using an ability to the combat, if they make it so that if I go light, light, heavy, it's a specific pattern or light, heavy, light or heavy, heavy, light or whatever. If they add some sort of fluidity between light and heavy attacks, that would make it more interesting. If they added a parry system, that would make it more interesting. There's a lot of things that they could do or don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to overhaul the base combat. Let us have more skills per weapon. Now that it's only two weapons, if we stick to just three skills, they've gone from us having access at any time to nine skills down to six skills. And with the base combat staying pretty much the same as it was in the preview event, 
that could feel bad. So maybe give us an extra skill to unlock per um, weapon. So instead of having three skills on each weapon, we have four. So that, that would give us eight skills total. That would put, put us closer to the nine that it was. But instead of swapping between three weapons, we're swapping between two weapons. I don't know, just spitballing some ideas here. I, I don't dislike this. In fact, I think it I think it could actually make it more interesting because now I have to make a choice. Now, instead of going like, I would probably go like spear, bow, and then life staff because you want to have the life staff. Now I might not have the life staff and that might make it, 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 it makes it a more difficult choice like i really got to think do i want the mobility from the life staff or do i want to go double damage weapons one melee one range um there's some thought process into how you develop your character this way so i don't know we'll have to see i think this could be a good move but i think some some further adjustments might be needed we'll see anyways uh moving on players can now move during ranged attack animations thank you god instead of just being locked in place while you're uh arranged you can you can basically kite now as far as i'm reading this they've adjusted ranged attack cancels as well to ensure that they offer as much flexibility as the melee attack updates in the December update. Um, there's more animation canceling that you can do to make you more reactive to what's going on in combat. They've updated grit breaking to make it more evident and apparent visually to players. And they've also done some updates to the combat networking uh, as they continue to improve how combat functions. They say specifically here, they've adjusted hit detection logic to add a brief delay before attack hits are confirmed for better detection detection of hits versus blocks and dodges. Uh, and then finally, but not least, uh, some uh, user interface, uh, user experience updates. This is pretty huge, I think. Settlement updates. Visual variety has been added to specific settlements. Now all settlements have a unique layout. Hallelujah. What's the word? Hallelujah. Thank, praise the, whatever. No, no more copy paste towns, I think, <laughs> hopefully. But this was a huge complaint um, during the preview event. They were like, hey guys, like five of your eight towns look identical. Could you mix it up a bit? They've done that. Great. Also, crafting stations now visually upgrade with each new tier, making it easier for players to visually distinguish the levels of each settlement's various stations. Cool. You'll be able to tell a level one from a level three blacksmithing area or whatever. That's I think that's good. Quest improvements. The starting experience through the acquisition of the Corruption's Bane has had many tweaks and alterations for progression flow. All existing quests have had their dialogue updated to improve NPC characterization and enhance quest directives. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I don't care so much about maybe be the dialogue that is happening on the text in the screen. I think there should be more NPC dialogue. I'm not saying you need to go SOTOR or ESO and have every single line of text read out loud by voice acted. You don't need that. When I walk up to an NPC, they should give me some sort of a greeting. They should say goodbye. It doesn't sound like much, but it adds a ton to the world immersion. A lot of MMOs do this. They're not going to read every line of quest text necessarily, but they're going to greet you and they're going to have various things. It just, it, it makes the world feel more alive. I hope they do that. Many zones have also had their uh, quest restructured for narrative flow, and they say they've replaced generic looting with new interactable objects. Big complaint from the preview event was like every single loot quest, we were just looting these like crates with like potions and shit in it. It didn't matter what the item was. We were always looting the same crates, no matter where in the world we were, what town, we could be in the middle of the woods or <laughs> in the freaking in this huge expansive fort. We were always just looting these wooden crates for whatever the hell object. The, these crates held everything in the entire game. So now they have new interactable objects. But I also think there should be more to the questing than just killing or picking things up. The forest, that's every MMO quest. No, all right. If you've seriously played it, yeah, like at its base, uh, RPG and MMO questing is pretty simplistic if you boil it down. But <laughs> this game's questing was ultra simplistic. They took it to a severe extreme. So, all right, last couple of things here for group play. They've updated how group experience functions to make it easier to play in a group. As long as a group as a whole does 15% damage to a creature, everyone in the group gets experience and a chance to loot. And they've also adjusted the amount of experience that is granted when killing enemies by groups. Um, it's reduced experience, but that makes sense because if you're in a group, you're killing things quicker. So getting reduced experience that's the logical play. And then the final adjustments worth mentioning were to the faction and territory system. They've adjusted certain values in preparation for an upcoming larger feature that will reward both company members and everyone in the faction that owns a territory some cool new benefits. The That is the overview. That is the update. These are pretty massive changes, I gotta say. I'm gonna be really... In, uh, I just... I can't... I honestly can't believe it. I can't believe 
Maybe I, I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm at a loss for words. New World is really just, they are listening to player feedback and making adjustments. Again, whether or not all of this feedback is the right direction for the game, whether or not this is ultimately gonna be the best thing for New World when it eventually comes out, I don't know. I hope that they open up the testing. I hope that there's some other big preview event that happens at some point this spring. I assume whenever they settle on a launch date, which again, it's still generic. They just say spring 2021. But I hope as we get closer and a lot of this stuff like solidifies and they get a lot more going with this game in, in terms of its like final form. <laughs> Um, I hope that um, we get some good hands-on time with a lot of playtesters because right now I think the alpha is pretty darn small. I got to check out this one preview event in I think it was November that I made that video, um, but that was just a couple hour play session and I don't I haven't had continued access to this thing. So I really want to get in there, get my hands on it and check out um, check out all of this new stuff because it's it all sounds pretty darn cool. Like I'm excited to, uh, for the direction that New World is going in and um, I hope it turns out good, man. I hope it just, uh, yeah, I'm hopeful. So there you go. Lots of new stuff going on with New World. Thanks for checking out this update. I'll continue to keep you guys updated as major uh, announcements come through, but that's it for me today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.